Hello folks, my name is Eric and welcome to the next part of my Bloomberg Terminal series here where we take a look at uh, Bloomberg Professional, uh, the software that is ubiquitous in the world of finance. And for today's video we're going to be taking a look at some advanced function exploration. And uh, if you watched my previous video, uh, we did some pretty basic uh, commands, uh, things really that you could Google yourself and you know not really have to look up. Uh, on the Bloomberg terminal, but today we're going to get a little bit deeper in it. Uh, this is still by no means super advanced uh, functionality, but uh, it is um, useful in my opinion. So a lot of these functions require that you have some security already loaded uh, up here in Bloomberg, and so for the sake of this video, uh, let's go ahead and load in Apple. And uh, we'll choose, of course, uh, U.S. Equity, and we'll just start off in the description page. We're going to be moving out of here in just a few seconds, so uh, I just want to let you know that the order of these um, uh, functions as they appear, uh, th there's no particular reason for that. I just jotted them down as I thought of them. So, you know, uh, this might seem a little bit fragmented, but bear with me and uh, we'll get through them and hopefully you find something uh, you like and um, I'll also put these commands in the description uh, that way if you want to refer to them later you're more than welcome to. So the first command that we're going to go through is Bico, B-I-C-O and that is uh, Bloomberg Intelligence and it's a uh, company primer so if you're looking to uh, dig into a company and learn more about it. Uh, Bloomberg has analysts that they assign to different companies and they'll put together reports for you that you can uh, read and give you some information about the business. So in this case you saw that we added in uh, Apple and uh, when I typed in Bico it defaulted to Apple of course and you could just change it right here to a different company if you wanted. And they'll put together a different uh, report of different topics um, and you can scroll through that, you can read it, and you can even download it to a PDF if you want to print it out uh, to show your colleagues. I'm just scrolling through, through here and you can see um, just how thorough it is and if for some reason you wanted to <clears throat> get some more info you could even reach out to the analyst who wrote it. So now that we've taken a look at that, let's go ahead and take a look at our next command, which is uh, CACS, and that is Corporate Actions. So if you're looking to find out what's going on with Apple in the uh, next uh, few months, uh, when they're paying dividends and so forth, uh, you can go right through here and it will provide you with that information. And it goes back quite far, and you can even you can even um, set it to, to display from a certain uh, time frame if you'd like and there are also uh, different filters that you can apply as you can see so I'm not gonna uh, spend too much time on this because it's pretty self-explanatory the next fun function is DRIV for company drivers uh, this page will um, well give you company drivers it takes a second to load in a little bit more than a second I guess here we go. And give you some information on profitability and so forth. Again, I won't spend too much time on this, but you can see where it's going. Let's take a look at um, BRC. And BRC is uh, the research portal, and uh, this is where you can gather um, uh, analyst reports on the company you're choosing. Of course it'll load in the default security that you have here. Uh, you can change this of course. And you can see that uh, there's various reports here. One from Deutsche Bank, uh, another one from JP Morgan, uh, and so forth. You can scroll through, scroll through here and read these. Um, not all research reports are available. Um, you have to subscribe to some of them. Uh, so you know, if I were to, I don't want to open any of these because I don't know if there's any sort of consequence for doing that because it's, uh, you know, proprietary research. But uh, I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm just gonna go back. Let's just, let's just forget that. Um, but you can go through here and you can take a look at different 
uh, research reports. Let's go ahead and take a look at EEB next. And this is the estimate consensus uh, detail. And it'll give you some more information on where estimate numbers are coming from for a particular company. And you can see the different analysts here that have put their projections out. And uh, you can see some here from uh, Loop and Whitbush and, and so forth. All sorts of different measures you can apply. And now let's move on to CAST for the uh, co uh, capital structure of a particular firm. And of course, we've pulled up Apple. You can see all their uh, unsecured bonds. I'll just click through some of these items here so you can take a look. And now let's take a look at CF. CF is one of the main functions. I probably should have covered it um, in my first video. It is company filings. Um, so let me just go ahead and uh, pull up CF. And uh, what it'll do is sort of aggregate uh, the company's filings, their 10Q and Ks and 8K forms, and it'll direct you directly to the SEC website where it'll load it in from the SEC website. And you can take a look at uh, the company filings without having to go to the SEC, it's all built into the platform. Next to command uh, is going to be DDIS, and that is debt distribution. Again, as it applies to the default security, which is Apple, you can change that. A lot of these screens have this uh, sub uh, uh, field here, you can change the company. So if I wanted to change it to Alphabet, I'll just change it there. And that becomes our default security now, so you can see how that works. And then um, if I pull down this menu, different functions and then related functions, of course. And of course, we're looking at the debt distribution. And we can see different uh, maturities here up through uh, 2026 for Alphabet. And let's take a look at uh, something a little bit different now. Uh, that we're starting to get into more juicy things. Uh, this one is called beta. And this is the historical beta um, for security and it allows you to track an equity's performance uh, versus the benchmark. So in this case we are uh, using the SPX or the S&P 500 as the relative index. So for the stats nerds, uh, this is where you want to be. If you're looking for uh, environmental, social, and governance factors relating to a specific firm, you can pull that up with ESG. Of course, as it applies to Alphabet here. You can see 33.2% of the Alphabet's workforce uh, are women. and the board size is 11 and so forth, you can uh, take a look at all these items at your leisure. And we'll go back. Let's take a look at MEMB, M-E-M-B. This is member weightings in um, a particular index, so we'll pull up the S&P as a default here. And uh, if you want to take a look at the members of the S&P 500, you can scroll through here and take a look. Let's go ahead and take a look at uh, MOV. And this is uh, Equity Index Movers. This is a great screen to have open throughout the trading day. And you can see which uh, securities have um, really uh, climbed during the day and also the ones that have fallen flat on their face. So you can see that Amazon up uh, 29 points today. And NVR, I'm not even really sure what NVR is, down 63 points. Of course you can customize all of this.
Let's take a look at ICS if you're interested for a top-down analysis. And uh, this classification browser is uh, sorted by industry here, so uh, we can expand. This is a great, great place to start your research. So uh, let us say that I'm looking for firms in the consumer discretionary sector. And uh, more specifically, I'm looking for uh, leisure products, sporting goods, and bicycles. We have relevant firms here we can take a look at. Let's look at something a little different. Uh, let's say uh, consumer staples. alcoholic beverages and uh, brewers. And we'll see the relevant list here. Anheuser-Busch, Heineken, etc. This is a great place to start research. Let's take a look at CM CMM now for country market movers. Another great screen to have open throughout the day to just get a, a sense of what's going on in the market. See that I have the NASDAQ up here, and this is the Bloomberg uh, dollar spot. And it's sorted of different um, categories, of course. You have your equity indices, uh, Forex, commodities, and so forth. Uh, great screen to have open throughout the day. Now, for um, for those of you who are maybe credit analysts um, or bond traders. Um, we have CRPR. Whoa, CRPR, which is the credit rating profile. And here we can take a look at credit ratings for various firms. So we'll go with our example and we'll take a look at, uh, let's take a look at Alphabet. And uh, you get uh, the rating from Moody's and S&P here. Obviously, this could be worse. These are fairly good credit ratings for this firm. Now let's take a look at a firm that, uh, well, isn't doing so well. Uh, like Royal Caribbean. You can see much lower um, credit ratings, uh, negative outlook from S&P. So this is a great place to really take a look at um, how the uh, credit rating houses are rating a specific firm and, and somewhat related to this is DRSK and this is the Bloomberg default risk uh, page and you can look at various firms here and through uh, various model inputs uh, Google, uh, <laughs> Bloomberg will actually compute uh, default probability so you can see the one year default probability based on these inputs for Royal is um, just under 2% you can modify this accordingly. So this is great for uh, credit analysts. Let's take a look at CFND. This is actually uh, probably one of my top 10 functions. And this is a correlation finder. So you can have a particular security versus an index, or you can customize this to various um, items, institutions, portfolio, uh, etc. And you can see that Royal versus the S&P 500 and it will provide um, uh, correlations. So you can see obviously it's very closely correlated with CCL which is another cruise line, it's Carnival Cruises and then you have um, uh, MGM Resorts obviously in the leisure and hospitality, uh, Norwegian Cruise Line. So this is a terrific, terrific function. And uh, if I were to pull up Apple, we'll be able to pull up securities that, that it is highly correlated with, of course, Qualcomm, Microsoft, uh, and so forth, uh, some of its competitors, NVIDIA, Autodesk, Intel. So this is a terrific, terrific function. Let's take a look at SRCH. 
and I use this a lot to find uh, bonds outstanding for a particular firm. So the way uh, it works is, first of all, you can see that it has uh, 413,292 active bonds listed, and uh, let's just say we wanted to find bonds outstanding for, uh, let's say, Royal Caribbean, since we've been talking about them. So I'll just start by typing in Royal Caribbean Cruises. You can see it's right here. Here's our match. And we'll close that and you can see it found four securities. So we'll press results. And you can see um, the uh, bonds here, very, uh, various uh, maturities uh, up until 2028 looks like and their associated credit rating type of bond maturity got a callable here at 2028 and if we wanted to uh, get some more info I'll pull up uh, this one here since it has the shortest uh, maturity and we can get a description yield and spread analysis uh, and so forth so let's take a look at the uh, description you can see that it's selling at discount of course no surprise there, with a yield of 19.237%. And for traders, you can uh, b buy and sell. We'll go back one page, and we'll take a look at the yield and spread analysis. Okay. So you can do this from various for various securities, of course. Um, which brings me to my next function, which is not related to uh, bonds at all, really, uh, is M&A, or MA for mergers and acquisitions. This is a terrific uh, way to keep track of uh, mergers. And really, they've got a huge deal listed down here. Um, but let's say we wanted to get some more information on the uh, Charles Schwab acquisition of TD Ameritrade. This is probably one of the really big acquisitions that's going to be uh, completed this year. So I'll start by uh, typing in Schwab. And we can see um, the merger here with TD Ameritrade Holdings uh, with a value of... Uh, 29,577. Of course, this is in millions. And it'll give you some more information on the um, on the deal. So you can get a timeline here. It says it's expected to be completed uh, by the end of the year. Uh, proposal was in uh, November. And of course, the announcement in late November. And I'll click through some of these items so you can take a look. great platform for those in M&A. So a lot of these functions really make Bloomberg Professional worth the price of admission, really. Of course, you can get a lot of this information online, but to be able to have it all aggregated and placed in one uh, platform is um, it's very useful for people in the uh, industry who want to just be able to pull it up without having to dig all over the internet and just like that we've gone through my list of uh, more advanced uh, functions in Bloomberg and just for fun we'll add a uh, useless but interesting one called rich which is the Bloomberg billionaires index if you are interested in seeing who the richest people on earth are right now, Jeff Bezos, no surprise, comes in at number one, $145 billion. So that concludes this video. I hope you enjoyed it. It's a little bit shorter than the uh, video last time. I, I did want to just kind of flow through these and uh, not spend too much time talking about them, but give you some ideas on what functions you can explore yourself on the terminal. Uh, if you're interested in more of these videos, please let me know. 
until the next time, I wish you a very good day, and I uh, hope you stay safe.